an athlete take on a swimmer and a footballer? It's a question of sport in half an hour. After, more tales of bravery from the 999 Lifesavers. Tonight on Lifesavers, a jet ski accident. They've got just minutes to find him. The minor ailments that can ruin a holiday. Plus, the baby girl whose life was saved by the family cat. This is the King George V dock in the east end of London. It used to be a busy commercial dock, but now it's a playground for water sports like jet skiing. There are 65,000 of them around the UK now. Their speed and manoeuvrability make them particularly useful for the emergency services. The lifeguards on the Wirral have had them for four years, and this summer, Essex police got one to patrol their beaches. For most users, it's the thrill of speeding over the water that gets them hooked. If you fall off, you get wet, and that's about it. The craft has a special cut-off switch, this thing here, which stops it dead if you come off so that you can swim back to it. Or at least, that's the theory. Our first reconstruction tonight takes us to Colwyn Bay in North Wales. There, jet skiers have to be particularly careful if there's a strong offshore wind. Exhilaration. The exhilaration, that's what it's about. The balls are, are whizzing around at 40 mile an hour. <laughs> I'd think you've got minutes. You were shaking uncontrollably. One of the better birthday presents I bought him. <laughs> Just get the adrenaline going. No farts, just pure freedom. Oh, ecstasy, brilliant, fantastic. We have a, a, a group of jet skiers at Gallery and Cohen Bay and Rose on Sea Tower at weekends, and we all know one another very well indeed and have great fun and a good family atmosphere. In April 1996, two friends, Steve Walker and Mike Hodgett, visited Colwyn Bay for the first time. In our reconstruction, Steve is played by an actor. Mike takes part as himself. Steve and I, very good friends. We've been through a lot together. Good times and bad times. We've done quite a few things. Uh, jet skiing was the latest craze. When we set off towards Colwyn Bay, about halfway there, the wind was whipping in my ears. It was a quite cold, windy day. And I decided to get my hat. My friend Mike had bought it me for my birthday the previous year in November. <laughs> this was the first opportunity he had to wear it. Um, I'm just very glad he did. When you first get out there, I suppose you have a tendency to, to show off. I think everybody does a little bit. But it's just such good fun spinning around in the water. You've got to fall off the jet ski at some point, otherwise You've not took it to its you've not took it to its limits. I went to a half sort of 360 spin, and as I came out of the 360, I just happened to be facing out to Old Z. And I just throttled it to take it out of the spin and just headed directly out to sea. So I've been going out there possibly three to four minutes when I decided to uh, look around just to see how far I'd actually gone out. And when I looked round, I thought, geez, I'm a bit far out here. I'd better turn around and come back. So I locked it over to the left. As she swung round, a wave just caught me. As it's crashed over, it, it pushed me straight off the jet ski. When I came to surface, I'm looking round to get stuck in a situation where I am in relation to my jet ski, and I see she's probably idling around about 15 to 20 yards away. I'd only gone about two minutes and I felt absolutely exhausted, totally exhausted. 
I can see the jet ski getting blue farther and farther away. I'm thinking, how the heck have I got in this position? Because I fell off it dozens of times. And this particular time, I can't get back to it. I'm swimming like crazy. I ain't going anywhere. And the buoyancy aid is holding me back. It was at this point that it crossed my mind. Should I take it off? And I actually unbuckled the top two fasteners. I thought better of it, because I'm not a, that good of a swimmer, and I know I've probably got 10 minutes absolute tops. So if I can't make it to that jet ski, that's me over. And I wasn't prepared to take that chance. In between this, I'm looking to the jet ski, I'm looking to the shore, and I know my life's going to depend on it, which way I'm going to go. In the end, I decided to swim for shore. After I'd been swimming for maybe 20 minutes, I realised I'm virtually getting nowhere. I'm thinking, Mike, you must know I'm lost now. You must know. You must alert somebody. You must get someone to come out and find me. But Mike had no idea that Steve was in trouble. Or that a group of divers had found his friend's abandoned jet ski a mile out in the bay. It was probably another 10 minutes before I consciously thought that I, you know, I couldn't see him anywhere. So I decided to head back to the, the slipway where Stephen and I had, had launched from. Stephen's jet ski was, was at the bottom of the slipway. My immediate reaction was he'd gone to perhaps get a cup of tea. By this time, my legs have gone completely numb. I can hardly feel them. My arms have gone. My chest constricted. And all I can think of is I just do not want to die in this grey, horrible sea in the middle of nowhere without my family knowing how hard I tried to get back. <laughs> London, no mobile. This is Hollyhead Coast Guard. Coast Guard Andy Collis was on routine patrol when he heard that a jet ski had been recovered from the bay without its rider. With the temperatures of the water being so low in April, uh, they would have been suffering hypothermia in no time at all. So we knew if there was someone missing, it was an immediate job. The RNLI launched two lifeboats, but the sea conditions meant they'd take at least 15 minutes to reach the search area. Meanwhile, Andy Collis tried to find out who owned the jet ski. Listen, we found the jet ski. Any of your guys missing? You're joking? No, I don't know. Um, who's, somebody's missing. Who's missing? Hold on, we better check. Let's have a head count. Who's there? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody's there. Yeah. What, what bike's he on? Yamaha. Who's purple the white? Yamaha. Yamaha purple. Who's got one of them? Immediately, the, they knew it wasn't a local jet ski. Let's, Let's go, go look. Let's, Let's go and look. I couldn't stop them from going out. As soon as I told them the location, they were off. We didn't have a clue who we were looking for. We didn't know, didn't know anything. But I thought, it, it's just got to be worth a try. We've spread out approximately 15 to 20 feet apart. When we got over half a mile from the end of the pier, the wind was just bitingly cold. It was cutting into you. But we all kept going because we just hoped that we could find someone in the water. By now, Mike had realised that Steve had not just gone for a cup of tea. I think my friend's missing out there. My yeah, imagination okay. was just um, wreaking havoc, really. How long has he been missing? How long has he been out there? We launched about 50 minutes ago. 50 I wouldn't minutes. let myself believe it, but uh, I thought he'd possibly gone, obviously. We'd seem to have been going out for what seemed like a long time, but one can see at least a quarter of an hour, and you can cover quite a distance on that length. I thought that if anybody's out in this water, you must really think the end of the earth is coming. It is a needle in a haystack. I began to wonder whether he was alive or whether he was, or whether he was dead. Then, out of the blue, one of the skiers on our, my left-hand side had spotted him in the water. I just couldn't believe that we'd actually found him. He was so cold. I don't think he would have survived above another five minutes in the water. I think five minutes would have been the, the maximum. We've got you. You're safe. You're John Dean knew that they'd need help to bring Steve ashore, so he'd sent his son to find a boat. I think they found him, you know. By now, Steve had been in the water for more than an hour. But because the ambulance wasn't there, we put him straight into the back of the Coast Guard pickup with a cover on the back. I could see he was shaking violently. 
But I, I think in my heart of hearts then I knew that he was, he was going to be all right. Steve needed treatment for severe hypothermia, but his condition could have been far worse. Luckily, the most important thing was he was well prepared for the day. He had got on his helmet, he'd got on a good suit, he got on his life jacket, but he just hadn't bargained on the rough sea and the offshore wind. The cardinal rule is never go out by yourself. It is the most dangerous thing you can do. It was only later that I thought about the hat and how much heat you can lose through the top of your head. It's one of the best birthday presents I've ever bought, Stephen. When I got home, I have to give it some deep thought about keeping the jet ski or getting rid of the jet ski. I thought, well, every time I'm going to go out, my wife, Yvonne, and my daughter, Ellie, is going to be worrying, especially my daughter, Ellie, because she was in tears when, it, when I got home, and she was quite concerned. It would be selfish of me just to keep the jet ski and go out with, with them worrying every single time I went out. So I decided to um, turn the jet ski into a conservatory, and that's what I built. Steve Walker is living proof of the value of wearing the correct clothing. That's just one of the important safety messages for anyone involved in water sports to remember. If you're going out on the open sea, check the weather and tides, especially if, like Steve, you don't know the area. Wear the right gear. Steve's hat probably saved his life. If it had been in bright day-glow colours, he may have been found quicker. Don't go off alone. If Steve and Mike had stuck together, their emergency may never have happened. And check the fuel and make sure the engine's well serviced. Almost half the call-outs to jet skiers are because they've broken down. There's more information about jet ski safety in this free leaflet. There are 10,000 copies available, but it's first come, first served. To get one, send a large stamped addressed envelope to Jet Ski Safety, RNLI, West Key Road, Poole, Dorset, BH15 1HZ. And we'll give you that address again at the end of the programme. For most people, a summer holiday is the highlight of the year.